I'm Kevin Mamajek, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. So in um, 4.6, Niagara 4.6 and higher, we include a Niagara security service that you might be uh, quite interested in because it's uh, going to play a bigger role as we transition into signed modules and it gives an enterprise a holistic view of their uh, security settings within uh, the Niagara uh, architecture. So let me open up the palette, cryptic search here, Niagara Security Service, NSS. Took me a while to find that one. Um, so now that I have that up, oh, actually I was gonna show you the palette. So there's a service, drag that into your um, services space. Um, the other thing to note is this, uh, there is an alarm extension, which I'll show you, you can apply to a certificate. So part of the service goes out and looks at all your devices and gathers all the certificates and lets you know when they're going to expire. So that is actually a, uh, um, a great piece of information because you can get one alarm console that will start to say, hey, you've got a couple that need to be expired. So if we look at the service itself, I'll just double click it, it will open up the dashboard. I'm gonna to go to the um, AX property sheet. So we're here, I can turn it on, right? Um, it will go and gather certificates in your network. So you'll see that there's um, two that I've got going here. There's this Tritium one, and then there's a my mistake one where I um, created one so that I could get an error. But you see the little numeric point for uh, when it expires? Those are the number of the days. You can add that alarm extension uh, to that point, and then you can pump that up into an alarm console. So if I wanted to go ahead and um, add this alarm extension, I can now have the ability to you know, throw that up into a console someplace. Because there's two things here you should uh, be aware of that I learned trying to do this video. This save dashboard to BOG, um, what happens, I created this station in the office where I had access to physical hardware and now I'm COVID-19 in my basement <laughs> and um, I should have had that to true and then it would have cached it so I could do the, de the demo a little better. So what it does is when it gathers up the information, it will actually store the, the JSON is below it in the actual bog so you have data that's already cached. Uh, the other thing that important is this station link. Um, it is default. This is default to false and this is default to remote station. You can change it to a local view that's inside the supervisor. Um, we recommend you keep the station because when you press the link, it will actually let you change or fix the setting that you're uh, that it's reporting on. So I would leave that um, the same there. And then there's also if you need to fire off uh, an action to trigger it to go and uh, talk to all the JSONs below it, you have that option as well. So it's pretty simple. Uh, we give you high alerts. We give you warnings that we think you should change. Uh, we give you some good things. You know, we're gonna tell you a lot of bad that you have set that you wanna go change. And then we, we're gonna list out what you're doing right. And then there's info that gives you some basic information. So when you are on the supervisor, you have a um, system view and you have a station view. The station view would be the uh, supervisor um, process. The system view is a summary of everything it sees. So if I have in my Niagara network um, a couple JSONs that are plumbed to that supervisor, they show up in the dashboard. It's really cool. The only thing I'll need to have is a, a license that will allow the supervisor to see um, multiple JSONs at the same time. That's the only th uh, only thing you have to be aware of. There is a, a license change for that. Everything else on the JSON, it's included in the license for the actual station view. So these would be summaries. I didn't cache it, so I don't have it. This is the, the actual um, supervisor uh, process. So I should, probably should not have named it security. That just confuses things. But you'll see that I get my summary for that station. And if I had a couple hundred JSONs, they would all appear here in, in these summary pages. When I go to a particular station, I click on it, and that's where those links were involved. It takes me right to that that uh, station. Of course, I've already authenticated to this one, so it didn't ask me for credentials. So now I'm looking at the supervisor process or a JACE, right, or a, an edge product. So here you can see um, I can hide all of the other things if I don't want to see them. So just kind of give me the... Um, bad things. So here I have a web service and HTTP is enabled. 
That's not by default. <laughs> I went and overrode that. So if I click on it, see that link? It took me right to that um, service. What I can do here is I can go in here and say, okay, yeah, that's probably not a good idea. And um, it was also talking about my minimum protocol was one when I have something better. So I'm going to move that up to 1.2. So I'll go ahead and save that. If we go back to the dashboard, you'll see that now, um, if we look under the web service, we're not even getting a red check anymore. We're just getting, hey, that the Tritium certificate is self-signed. It's good, but it's self-signed. But I moved from a, a yellow to a green and I got rid of the red. So that's what it is. It's, it's, it's an awareness of what your settings are. A lot of enterprises, there's a lot of different contractors involved and all of a sudden they can get a view of how each of those JSEs are set up and make sure that they're secured and uh, hardened uh, with the best practices. So this kind of teaches you some best practices. It kind of gives you an awareness. Um, I, I've been using it more and more for understanding what unsigned objects I have running in my wire sheet. So this one has one that's not signed. Um, the bigger thing you should be aware of is as we move to 4.9, um, we're moving the signed module state from low to medium. And that is, is it's gonna stop from executing any of the unsigned modules. Now I still have the ability, which I have done, <laughs> To roll that back, I can go in and change that to say, oh, well, let's, I'm not ready yet, let's move it to low, and then it will go back to warning me and, and allow those to execute. But eventually, we're going to get to a point where we will not allow unsigned modules to run for security reasons, right? So this dashboard gives you a great insight into what each JSE is running and whether they're signed or not. So that's a good place to go. Um, permissions, it gives you a, another understanding of I've got a couple things this haystack and haystack has permissions that I might want to check that is a, a, a module that I'm running so it's giving me some awareness on there my favorite is the logging service how many times have I turned logging on and I forget to turn it off right now it will go and list out all of the logging services that you have that are um, beyond info or severe so here I'm running all for analytics if I want to go and to tone that down I can go and do that I'm gonna leave it for the next demo but um, half the time I can't even remember how to set those logs or where to find those log files so it's uh, added that uh, pretty quickly for me to do okay and then it also does a file system this joker and admin um, they have access to the file system so that's not a good thing in fact joker was up here under uh, the users that uh, joker has disabled the auto log off and has, has um, enabled concurrent sessions. So that's probably not a good thing, right? So if I have uh, an admin, if, if you have concurrent disabled, right, it means that when I log in, it will force any other logins out, which is the way, the proper way of doing that. So this is letting me know that, yeah, there's a, there, you could have a good reason for that, but you might want to um, disable that feature. So again, the info is not a, a red flag, but it's you, sh you should be aware of this situation. So that is, um, again, the security dashboard for Niagara.